All right, you guys. You ever seen a convicted terrorist in a floral print shirt before? It's about to get real, you guys. <clears throat> and... All right, I am the most poser terrorist ever. I was literally arrested in Silicon Valley at a Starbucks holding a soy macchiato. In 2005, I was sent to prison on terrorism charges for freeing thousands of animals from farms where they raise them to make coats. So, do I regret it? Do I regret it? Fuck no, it was the best thing I ever did. We shut two of those farms down. But I left one thing out. Before prison, I was a fugitive and I was good at it. The FBI couldn't catch me for seven years. Seriously, the FBI, stupid. So, you don't need prison advice if they never catch you. So here are the two rules of being a successful fugitive. Number one, have a real ID under a fake name obtained with forged documents. I got mine in a Virginia ID, uh, DMV, the same place as the 9-11 hijackers. Yeah, you guys, I went there. Number two, don't call your parents. Wait for it. Don't call your parents. The FBI will stop hiding in bushes outside your girlfriend's house long before they stop watching your parents. Yeah, that photo is really depressing. Mom, if you're out there, I'm, I'm really sorry about all that. So, if you do get caught, here are the seven rules of surviving prison. Rule number one, put your crime into one clear sentence. Your crime is your marketing slogan. The way it works in federal prison is this. When somebody asks what you're in for and they don't understand your answer, all they hear is child porn. <laughs> so, that's really cool that you're in, you know, for like securities fraud or something, but I could promise you that Big Mike over in cell block six has no idea what that means, and you will be dodging his shank by noon. I promise you. <laughs> so, rule number two. Wait for it. And you will be tested and you must pass their test. My first day in jail, a guard shoved me into a holding room the size of your bathroom filled with 50 guys. The whole room went silent. Finally, somebody looked at me and broke the silence and said, what did this motherfucker do, cheat on the SATs? <laughs> and for the next two minutes, the whole room made fun of me, but it was a test, you guys. It was not a test of toughness, it was a test of confidence. And there's only one way to pass, to make fun of them right back, and that's what I did. Rule number three of surviving prison. Wait for it. <laughs> Leverage your weirdness. If you try to act tough and fit in, you are entering into a contract, and the contract is, okay, cool guy, you're playing by our rules now. Now, the rules are stupid. Do not be the cool guy. Exaggerate your differences and do so very publicly. Um, the first day in a federal cell block, all eyes were on me. A guy challenged me to a game of chess. At the end of it, he said, good game, and he put out his fist, a fist bump. You guys, I was 27 and I had never fist bumped before. I had no idea what to do. So I'm standing there putting my fist out thinking, what the hell does he want me to do? And the whole room is looking at me. So after 10 seconds of deliberation, thinking, what am I supposed to do? I went. The whole room exploded in laughter. But you know what? They never messed with me after that because I was too square to be bothered with. Number four, you see the guy with the remote. He has power. You must be friends with him. That man has the remote because he has clout. I've, I had this hillbilly Wisconsin guy who kept calling me a tree hugger. Word had gotten out in the jail that I had a huge 80s vinyl hip hop collection. And you know who liked 80s hip hop? The guy with the remote. So listen, all I'm saying is, you guys, I outsourced my self-defense to a guy with a face tattoo who made dynamite in his kitchen for a living, okay? That is next level gangster, come on. All right. Number five, manufacture the illusion of rock star status. I got over 3,000 pieces of mail in prison from supporters. Uh, other prisoners thought I was some kind of big deal and they treated me accordingly. Now, the good news is you can fake this. It does not matter what's in the envelopes. It just matters the other prisoners hear your name every day at mail call. Um, you know what's better than being known as the toughest guy in prison? Being known as the guy who gets a half dozen letters from girls every day. And you know what my nickname in prison was? Eco-pimp. Hand to God. True story. Rule number six. Make your jailers fear you. You can also create the illusion there is an army of people who will storm the prison gates if the guards mess with you. And I actually had an army. They were called vegans. And uh, they were very helpful. There was this jail that refused to give me vegan food, and they got dozens of angry calls. The jail freaked out. So I got called into the captain's office. Um, he said, Mr. Young, what do we have to do to make these phone calls stop? You know what I did? I pulled out a, uh, a pencil. I made him a vegan grocery shopping list, and I slid it across the table. You guys, I was in jail and I had a cop doing my personal grocery shopping every morning. And I can tell you, I can tell you that food tastes a lot better when it's delivered by your own personal cop concierge. Take it from somebody who knows. So when they finally let you out of prison, rule number seven, wait for it, have a prison release party in the Hollywood Hills house of one of the child actors in the sitcom Home Improvement. This has nothing to do with surviving prison, but this is what I did when I got out and it was fucking awesome. Thank you. 
But on a serious note, you guys, um, if we're going to live in a world worth living in, some of us are going to have to go to prison. Seriously. And um, if you're afraid of breaking unjust laws, be more afraid of not making history. And just remember that fear is the feedback you receive when you're about to maximize your potential as a human being. So the only thing worse than getting, not, than getting caught is doing nothing at all. Thank you.